Cartoon TV show fans have always wanted to know more about the creation of their favorite characters. How do we know what fan theories may be true and which are completely made up? Make sure to watch until the end of the video to find out our number one misconception about the iconic Bugs Bunny. If you like learning about fan theories as much as we do, make sure to subscribe to The Things and give this video a big thumbs up. Today we're going over the 10 biggest misconceptions about popular cartoon TV shows. The Ninja Turtles Bandana Colors from comic strip and animated TV show to toy figures and live action movie, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles have been a part of our lives since 1984. The quirky characters, Leonardo, Raphael, Donatello, and Michelangelo, were not always the lighthearted, goofy heroes we know today. Originating from a black and white comic book, the characters' bandanas were not always their signature colors. In fact, they used to all have red masks. The need to associate a bandana color to distinguish between each Ninja Turtle was a result from a marketing strategy to develop a cartoon series and action figures to appeal to a younger audience. The original comic was considered to be PG-13, with occasional swear words and more violence. In fact, the original distinguishing factor between each character was their individual choice of weapons. This also would not have been appropriate for a younger audience. Even some of the characters had to change as a result of the shift in audience. In the comics, the Ninja Turtles had an ally vigilante, Casey Jones. Adorned with a hockey mask, Casey Jones would fight against low-level criminals, going so far as beating them with baseball bats. This is a significantly darker aspect of the cartoon TV show we know and love. Instead of an ally vigilante, we have Shredder, a villain we really do love to hate. Ultimately, the choice to trade in swear words and weapons for colored bandanas and pizza was a good one, as TMNT continues to be a cartoon TV show for the ages. Seth MacFarlane's claim to fame is Family Guy. Now on Netflix, fans can watch their favorite Family Guy episodes over and over, enjoying the spot-on, entertaining, satirical humor that writer, creator, and actor Seth MacFarlane is known for. Although many would argue that MacFarlane's claim to fame was his hilarious stories about main character Peter Griffin and his family, he had experience working on another popular cartoon TV show before Family Guy. Dexter's Laboratory was a show about a temperamental, small-sized scientist and his meta tall blonde sister. Dexter's elaborate schemes made him a lovable yet misguided character who always got himself in and out of ridiculous situations. Although only having written four episodes of the show, McFarlane had a taste of writing for a successful cartoon show before he had started working on Family Guy. His following success with Ted, Ted 2, and One Million Ways to Die in the West continues to display McFarlane's unparalleled writing. Scooby-Doo's ability to speak English Scooby-Doo is a timeless series that focuses on a group of friends and a talking dog, solving mysteries and catching masked criminals. However entertaining this show and the ensuing live-action movie are, Scooby-Doo's unexplained ability to speak English has been questioned by fans. This has resulted in an extremely elaborate fan theory that has been so well thought out it could even be convincing. This theory supposes that the reason for the dog's linguistic abilities is because he was a Soviet experiment. Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? was the show's first episode in 1969, just after the American and Russian space race. Because Russians first sent dogs into outer space before risking humans, the theory claims that in the Scooby-Doo universe, Russian scientists went a step forward in creating a program that bred dogs to be capable of human thought and ability to speak. Scooby-Doo is theorized to have created an intimate bond with one of the scientists as a puppy and was thereby granted the opportunity to escape. This fan theory doesn't hold up in the real world, but is a well-crafted argument for a show that was created during the Cold War. Plus, if we're going to try to speculate about a mysterious misconception, it might as well be Scooby-Doo, a show that revolves around the premise of solving mysteries. Dexter's Lab inspired Big Bang Theory. In 2008, The Big Bang Theory released their complete season two. On the front of the box was an image that was an exact replica of Dexter's laboratory. Each of the series characters matched in an identical pose. This began an internet wave of speculation regarding the use of this image for the popular TV comedy series. Was The Big Bang Theory inspired by our beloved Dexter? Does this insinuate an unhealthy sibling relationship? Not at all. Creator of the image, Wickfield, claims that the likeness between photos was simply based on physical characteristics and personality traits. Although Penny and Leonard are depicted as Dexter and Dee Dee, this was simply a representation of their role on the show, and the fact that both Dee Dee and Penny are the only blonde females on each show. Aside from that, the only other comparison seems to be based on the fact that both shows are based on an interest in science. Although a history of inspiration from Dexter's laboratory would have been a fascinating story about the inspiration for the sitcom, it seems to simply be a case of fantastic artwork that the internet can't get enough of. Nevertheless, 
this piece of artwork has been the foundation of fan fiction and theories galore. It really does seem to be true that pictures can be worth a thousand words. Whether those words are true or not, that's always up for debate, and in this case is proven to certainly be a misconception. SpongeBob SquarePants is a result of nuclear testing. Next on the list is a cartoon TV show that continues to be popular since it first aired in 1999. Fans love the wacky stories of SpongeBob, a sponge, and his friends, among which include Patrick the Starfish, Sandy the Squirrel, Squidward the Octopus, and Mr. Krabs, the businessman crab. This world in Bikini Bottom is a peculiar one, and fans have been trying to determine where these strange yet lovable characters might have come from. The most popular fan theory out there is that Bikini Bottom is actually based on Bikini Atoll, a U.S. nuclear testing site in 1946. At the time, one particular bomb was called Baker, and it was let off underwater. Is the name of the nuclear site and the setting of SpongeBob SquarePants simply a coincidence? Or does it justify the underwater creature's ability to speak and function as a town? Actor and voice of SpongeBob, Tom Kenny, has responded to the speculation regarding the show's origin story. Kenny dismisses the theory, stating that the Bikini Atoll nuclear testing as an explanation for the character's mutations is simply a misconception. Instead, he clarifies that the world of Bikini Bottom is like another planet altogether, where the laws that govern our world are no longer applicable. A reference to historical phenomena would be out of place, as SpongeBob's success is partly a result of the lack of interaction with pop culture, never referencing events from outside of the show. Kenny believes that this contributes to the show's long-lasting popularity, as it never becomes irrelevant. Regardless of where some of TV's favorite characters come from, we're just happy they can continue to exist on our screens. Lady Rainicorn's language. Adventure Time has a unique, goofy, fantasy-like feel that we can't get enough of. It may be a surprise to hear that the voice actor responsible for Lady Rainicorn also voices BMO's character and is a storyboard artist for the show. There has been a lot of questions regarding what language Lady Rainicorn speaks, some even claiming it's Japanese. In fact, the character's voice actor, Nikki Yang, grew up in the United States but was born in Korea. As her first voice acting job, Yang decided to voice the character in Korean. The rumor that Lady Rainicorn is speaking Japanese is simply a misconception. Regardless of any language barrier, audiences still love Lady Rainicorn as much as any other character on the show. This is due to the show's ability to give the characters issues and relationships that are easy for audiences to relate to, making it a show as successful among kids as it is with teens and adults. Yang has even commented in interviews about the impact Lady Rainicorn has made on Korean-American kids who send her messages and emails about how much they enjoy the character. On top of speaking a foreign language, Lady Rainicorn was also the first pregnant unicorn on TV. We love Adventure Time for its humor that can be appreciated on so many levels and at so many ages. Misconceptions are common for characters new and old. Wait until you hear our number one misconception about Bugs Bunny. Rugrats Voices Believe it or not, the next cartoon TV show on our list was inspired by asking a simple question. If babies could talk, what would they say? Rugrats took fans by storm, as we loved having the chance to get to see how babies might view the world. The show appealed to children and parents, who enjoyed the change in perspective about what it's like to learn about the world you're growing up in. The babies, Tommy, Chucky, Dill, the twins, and Angelica, entertained multiple generations of viewers. Their voices brought a baby's thoughts to life, but it may be surprising to learn that all of the babies' voices were produced by women. Even though four of the main characters were boys, it is women responsible for their distinct voices. Christine Cavanaugh, the voice of Chucky Finster, was also the voice actress for Dexter in Dexter's Laboratory, and Babe the Talking Pig. These women were very dedicated to the show and their characters. Elizabeth Daly, the voice of Tommy Pickles, even continued to record while she was in labor. Through brilliant acting, writing, and animation, we would never have guessed that the voices of the characters we loved were produced by another other than children. Tigger's voice. Since 1968, fans have known and loved the voices and endearing personalities of the cast of Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh and the Blustery Day was even awarded an Academy Award for Best Animated Short Film. Among those recognizable voices is Paul Winchell, the voice behind the bouncing, upbeat Tigger. Winchell, who has since passed away, was one of the most iconic voices on television, using his British wife for the inspiration of Tigger's catchphrase, TTFN, ta-ta for now. Winchell was used to performing and entertaining a young audience, 
as a ventriloquist whose dummies are now displayed at the Smithsonian Institution in Washington. On top of his success as an actor and entertainer, Winchell was also an inventor and was most known for his invention of an early artificial heart he built in 1963 and then donated to the University of Utah for research. Among his 30 patents, Winchell has also invented a disposable razor and a flameless cigarette lighter. It's amazing that a lispy voice and contagious laugh we recognize as Tigger is also the inventor of so many important products and devices. Dying at the age of 82 in 2005, Winchell's voice will continue to live on through one of the most memorable cartoons of all time, Evil Morty and Rick's Audience. This next entry on our list is probably the least kid-friendly cartoon TV show. The lack of appeal to a young audience, however, has not prevented Rick and Morty from becoming extremely popular. Fan theories and fan fiction typically indicate massive interest in the storyline, origin, and hidden implications of TV shows. Rick and Morty is no exception, with the Evil Morty theory that we'll explore today. Fans first discovered the existence of Evil Morty, adorned with an eye patch, in the 10th episode of Season 1, Close Rick Counters of the Rick Kind. Evil Morty appeared as a member of the evil Rick and Morty team who sought to eradicate Ricks from other dimensions. The most shocking part of the episode was that evil Rick had been controlled by evil Morty's transmitter, located beneath his eye patch. The origin story of evil Morty starts to get very complicated as it's an interdimensional explanation substantiated by the photograph of Rick holding baby Morty in episode 2. This suggests that the Morty we know, who has returned after 20 years, although he's only 14, is not the same Morty in the photo, making it possible that there is a different evil Morty. Morty. Though this well-thought-out theory might have some ground, the whole premise of the show is its unpredictability, so trying to predict the outcome of its characters is futile. Nevertheless, trying to wrestle with the show's use of quantum physics while speculating about its characters is definitely one of the reasons why Rick and Morty continues to be so popular. Is Bugs Bunny a rabbit or a hare? Bugs Bunny has been a family name since the 1940s, making him not only number one on our list, but also the oldest. This character's popularity was not solely based on his appeal to children. He was also extremely popular during World War II, even named the Army mascot and starred in countless propaganda cartoons. Known for his catchphrase, What's up, Doc? and his mischievous ways of outrunning his hunter, Elmer Fudd, this so-called bunny may not be what he appears to be. The first Bugs Bunny episode was actually called A Wild Hare, prompting us to question if Bugs is a bunny or a hare. Based on his physical characteristics, it seems that Bugs isn't actually a bunny. Just like hares, Bugs has long hind legs, long ears, and is a grayish color. Bunnies, on the other hand, are a brown color, have shorter legs and smaller ears. Further adding to the fact that Bugs is really a hare is the fact that hares, like our Bugs, do not stay with their family, while bunnies do. Convinced that Bugs has the wrong name? Well, this could be another misconception. Unlike Bugs, who burrows underground like bunnies do, hares live exclusively above ground. The only way we could clear the confusion is by taking a DNA test to determine if Bugs has 48 chromosomes like a hare or 44 chromosomes like a rabbit. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, this isn't possible, as Bugs Bunny lives in our minds and our hearts. In the end, does it really matter if Bugs is a bunny or a hare? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Well, that's it for the 10 biggest misconceptions about popular cartoon TV shows. If you want to see more stories like this, make sure to watch 10 ridiculous examples of cartoon logic that will make you facepalm. Thanks for watching. <laughs>